All right. Hey, look at that. We are live. Woo! Only slightly late, but no big deal. Everyone who's watching us live, we are grateful for your patience. We are grateful that you're here for yourselves, for our community. Uh, I will just do intros in a moment, but first, there have been some folks who are pretty excited. Kayla, for example, she's a huge Anthony fan. Are we all? She said that anything with Anthony equals big yes. And Nathan replied on Twitter a little while ago saying that he can't wait. And then we had Heather who said that she was excited for the webinar tonight. You three, everybody else who's watching us live and all the folks who are watching on the replay, awesome. We really pre appreciate it. Um, if you're watching through the Google event page, you can use the Q&A app at the bottom of the video window. Uh, and if you can comment, if you're familiar with this Google Hangout thing, you could type just yes if you can hear us and see us just fine. If for whatever reason, if you can't do that in the Google Hangout page and you just want to tell us on Twitter, we are at simple underscore REV to make sure that we are transmitting just fine to you. If you want to ask us questions, there's that neat Q&A feature that's built into the Google Hangout. We're going to be looking at them and fielding some real time because this is not intended to be a presentation. This is intended to be an interaction. And of course, towards the end, we will have a bunch of your questions and we will field them one at a time. So first of all, who's this fella talking to you? Well, I'm Joel Zaslavsky. Uh, I'm a number of things, but I'm especially fond of creating simple living communities, podcasting, getting people stoked about spreadsheets. I'm also the founder of Simple Rev. A, I love exploring what it means to live intentionally and uh, I'm also pretty big on this whole authentic, vulnerable relationships thing and having lots of gratitude in life. So there's a little bit for me let me turn it over. There's two other folks who are with me. Sarah, how about you? Introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm Sarah Waycamp, and I am also part of Simple Rev along with Joel. And I also have a company called Parents Who, where we help parents and families to design their ideal family lives. And um, you might see some of my family come in in just a second, as I can hear in the wall behind me, my husband putting the two big boys to bed, so I apologize in advance if that happens, but uh, I'm glad to be here with you guys tonight, and I can't wait to hear uh, what Anthony has to say. If you have any questions or anything, I will help you with tech if I can, and um, be interrupting as the guys are talking with uh, any good questions you have or anything that comes up that uh, needs addressing. Welcome. Okay, and now for... Kind of. Hey, let's be let's be honest. Our main event for tonight. Anthony Ungaro is with us, with his lovely smiling face. Anthony, hello. Hello. Well, oh my, uh, that's quite the introduction. Well, who are uh, you? Would you like for the folks who don't know who you are or who are watching the replay, saying, "I'm going to take a flyer on this whole making your life better by um, doing my daily actions better and aligning my short-term actions with my long-term vision." What What's your deal? What's that all about? Well, yeah. uh, well, again, my name is Anthony Angaro, and and thank you for being here. I'm I'm really appreciative. And Joel, uh, Sarah, thank you so much for putting this together. Well, I, I'm really all about intentional living, and and I kind of put it through the premise of of aligning our daily actions with our long-term vision. About two years ago, I started a website called Break the Twitch. And that is what I've been working on. And just in the last month or so, I've been working on it full time and developing things and ideas and making videos and all that kind of stuff to just share this message of minimalism, intentional living, and really making our days look a lot like we want our lives to look. All right. Cool. Well, for those of you who are picking us up, you've been following along, or maybe you're just joining us at the last moment, this is a webinar. And we are calling it How to Use Small Daily Actions for a Better Life. And we're going to get going in just a moment here. I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Make sure that everyone's expectations are met and said. So we have some goals for this webinar. Uh, and the first one, we want to help you use your tech mindfully, especially mobile devices. We're very interested in teaching you how to better align your daily spending with your long-term vision and create the unique space for great habits. Probably some more nifniness we'll throw in there. And our, our time together, we started a couple minutes late. We were planning on going for 60 minutes, depending on the engagement, how many questions you have. We want to be respectful of your time, but we also want to make sure that you showed up 
you're honoring us with your presence and we get to what we need to get to as well. So in our time together, we're planning to explore how to prevent your brain and smartphone from slipping into mindless mode. Why self-control is the ultimate exercise of your freedom. How to stop saying, I'm, uh, I'm going to dot, 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 and then actually do that thing instead. We're talking about uh, the key difference between immediate actions and investment actions. I know, that's intriguing, and I was very pleased when I found out the difference. Uh, and also some productive ideas to reduce some counterproductive impulses. After all that good stuff, we'll field your questions, we'll sprinkle in your questions and comments as we go. Again, this is not intended for us to just talk at you. We want to engage you. We want you to connect with each other on Twitter, on the Google event page, wherever that may happen to be. Uh, you can tweet us. We are at simple underscore REV. You can use the hashtag pound simple rev, simple REV on Twitter, on Instagram, wherever you may happen to be. And then also there's the Q&A feature that's built into Google events if you want to ask a question for us to cover. Let's hit it. So the first main topic that Anthony and Sarah and I were talking ahead of time, we thought, I wonder what would be the best use of our time? What do folks want to hear about the most? And the top thing that we want to start with was mindful use of your tech, especially mobile devices, whether that's tablets or smartphones or whatever you have. And I just want to be clear, a little fair warning, I'm prone to overusing the word mindfulness. Sarah and Anthony know this, uh, and if you want just a level set here, so I tend to think of mindfulness in a similar way that Leo Babauta over at Zen Habits does, and really it just means paying attention. So mindfulness is really just training your attention, being non-judgmental about noticing what's going on around you, practice paying attention to the important things uh, that I want to think about, not the mindless things that someone else wants me to think about or that my brain is just spinning that's using to distract or escape me from more important things. So Anthony, I'm going to turn it over to you here. I know you've got some good examples in your personal life and from stories from people who are engaging you. Can you start us off? What's a great example of mindfully using our gadgets and gizmos? And then maybe you can contrast that with something that's a little more on the mindless side. Definitely. Well, I think you, you kind of hit the nail on the head when you said gadget or gizmo. To me, those, those things are both other words for tool. And that's exactly what our technology is. So cell phones, smartphones, tablets, TVs, whatever you want to call it, it's all a tool that we should be using to make our lives better. And a lot of the time what tends to happen is we fall away from that and it ends up kind of taking over our time and attention in ways that are not so intentional. So an example of being more mindful is, is using it in a way that allows you to connect with people, but doing it in a way that does not take you away from connecting with people in real life. So an example of when you're using it in a group or you're hanging out with someone and if your phone is constantly going off or you're getting text messages or different things, it can be really hard to be present and mindful at giving, you know, as in, in your own language there, um, being mindful of that other person's presence and giving your attention to them because that's really the best thing you can do for a person when you're, when you're with them. Mm-hmm. Well, already I see a comment from Aaron Brenneman who, hey Aaron, glad that you're here. He mentions a couple of tools that are tech tools and maybe we'll get into some of the, the technology tools that we can use to make sure that we're mindfully using our tech. There's some irony in there, but there's some good ones. He recommends Moment and Freedom. We'll have links to those later. Anthony, for now, uh, I know you and I and Sarah and everyone else in the world, anyone who has an internet connection, we've all fallen into this trap. Uh, of not realizing that we're just scrolling, 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 jumping from thing to thing, and we're not actually getting anywhere. Uh, we've lost track of time. We've lost track of purpose. What kind of triggers can we set for ourselves to catch us when we slip into this mindless technology use mode? It is really easy, especially today in our constantly connected state, to bounce from one thing to the other and not really realize um, that that is actually happening. One of the things that I like to do a lot is set a timer. So just like a kitchen egg timer, that's just something. You can use a digital version of it as well, but a kitchen timer is a great thing because it helps you stay in tune with the passing of time. There's nothing wrong with checking social media. There's nothing wrong with 
using your tools to connect with people and check up on things, especially if you're doing it for your business. But using something that kind of ding and gives you 20 minute notices and, and kind of pulls you out of that is a great way to just check in and make sure that you're on track with what you're actually trying to do. Egg timer. Old school, baby. Old school. You can get lots of Chrome extensions and good stuff like that too, but I like the old fashioned egg timer. This guy right here, you know, I, I, I've, uh, I have it next to me actually because I've been using it. So, Right on. So for me, I, I, I'm very extroverted and I would generally rely on people. I've given people permission friends and family to call me out when they see me using technology in a socially limiting way or a counterproductive way. Do you have an example of someone else who has used their relationships, the people who are around them, to remind them to be their trigger saying, hey, you're doing it again. Can you stop doing that? You know, I have a, I am that person. In fact, that was a, a big reason why I made a lot of these transitions is I was having lunch with a good friend of mine, uh, Matt DeCure. And over lunch, my phone was buzzing and, and going off and all this stuff, and he totally lost it. And was like, dude, we need to do something about this right now. So he, he went into my phone, and we looked through it, and he helped me turn off so many notifications. And he is totally that, you know, that person and just friends in general that will keep me in check and help me just make sure that if something crazy is going on that it's like, hey, bring it on back. We're, we're here, right? Yeah, okay. so that's been super helpful. So sometimes you just need to tell people to give them permission to exactly. not, not even call you out and just say, hey, you're doing it again. I'm right here. I'm in front of you. I'm with you. I can be more helpful than the Internet right now. The important people in your life will, uh, you know, are more than willing. It can be, you know, sometimes if you're really close to a person, it can be difficult uh, to get, you know, kind of have that back and forth. But I think it's really important to have those people and give them permission, as you said, to to call you out and go, hey, let's uh, snap to it here. Right on. Well, I'd love to hear from our webinar participants right now. I know that there's already some good chatter that's going on. So here's our first question for you. Uh, in the comments or on our Google event page. You can tweet us. We're at simple underscore REV. However else you want to share, what's one recent example of someone you know mindlessly using their tech, and what was the impact on others? That other can be you. That other can be their friends, their family, the their wider community. We would love to hear from you. Sarah is following along, and she'll riff on whatever you're talking about and highlighting the good things. So please. Let us know what's on your mind. Uh, but for now, Anthony, I guess we've given some samples of unintentional use of our tech, what that looks and feels like. I think we need to go a little bit deeper, a little mm -hmm. bit further, perhaps. You've got some super simple techniques. What's your what's your term for it? Is stupid easy? What? S stupid easy. Stupid easy. <laughs> stupid easy. Yeah. So let's start with just one. What is one stupid easy technique to remove those distractions from our from our phones? our iPads, you know, whatever that may be, without, this is the key, without blowing up other people's expectations of us or having to go back 10 years in time. And man, I love those flip phones <laughs> and those dumb flip phones, but I, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to go there. Yeah, w without having to throw your iPhone out the window and, and get, get a used flip phone uh, or that Nokia brick phone, you know, there, there are a lot of things that you can do. And I've seen a lot of literature, different things about basically making your smartphone into a dumb phone. And so what you want to do, one of, the, one of my favorite things to do, and it's the simplest too, it doesn't even require removing the apps you don't want to use, but if you take the app, so say you want to use Facebook less or in more appropriate times, you can move the app or bury it in a folder where your brain isn't expecting to see it. So. Every time if you, let's say you're with someone and you want to check something on your phone, they say, oh, can you check the weather really quick? It's very easy to just kind of have your brain twitch and go directly to the Facebook app and get lost in that moment for a second. Um, if you move it and put it in a place where the brain is not expecting to see it, you'll actually have that pause built in. And so you, you add in what's what I call intentional friction into the process, which will allow you to take a moment and realize, wait a minute, wait a minute, get back on track here. Okay, I, I actually started, when I learned about that a few 
months ago, I did that on my phone, I moved, Gmail is the major offender for me, and I moved it over three screens so that I would have flip flip in order to get there, and for the most part, I only use things that are just on the main screen. I only really have 12 apps on my phone that I ever use, and when it wasn't there anymore, it took a little while for that Twitch to be gone, but it worked. I'm just trying to make sure that people know that it works for you, it works for me, it works for thousands of other people. That's a pretty nifty tip. Well. We, well, there's a lot more to say there, and I'm sure we're going to bounce back and forth between main topics. I just want to, I'm a huge fan of quotes. And as much as we love technology, we're using it right now to communicate with people, to have people come together and engage each other. But there's a, this great quote by a guy named Ram Dev, and he talks about computers only activate two of our five senses, whereas nature activates all of them and pulls us back to the present. Mm -hmm. Go for a walk. That's his recommendation. Just go for a walk. Sometimes smartphones can't compete with nature, especially on a beautiful day. As much as you want to get sucked into it, the, the thing that you end up getting sucked into is the trees, the birds, the other people, the lakes, whatever it may happen to be. Um, so actually, we've got one more prompt here. Here's something that i like everyone who's watching to do right now. If you can comment in the Google uh, event page, on Twitter, or wherever else you want to be, we would love to know what's the first thing you picture when all your senses are activated. Take that however you will, but we would love to just know that real quick. All right, Anthony, I think let's go on. Sarah, do you have anything that you want to add? Any, any nifty stuff that you want to highlight, questions that are coming in? Um, no, I haven't seen any questions on Twitter or the um, event page, and this is all great stuff. I also have moved apps from the main screen two screens over and find it super helpful because, yeah, you go to check the weather and then suddenly you realize you've been on Facebook for 10 minutes and you have no idea how you even got there. So very useful stuff. It works. Cool. Well, I see another comment. Aaron says uh, he was on a work video conference today and the presenter's phone went off about eight times in 45 seconds before she addressed it. Whew. Yikes. That's, that's rough, man. Sorry I had to deal with that. And then uh, Megan. Hey, Megan. She's talking about in a previous job, the director of the office would often be looking at her phone throughout the meeting and not paying attention to what people are saying. Ouch. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we'll get back into it. Another big thing that I know, Anthony, you're great at and that people really wanted to hear about is daily spending. And by the way, if you recently joined this webinar, welcome. Feel free to type the word new into the Google event chat or on Twitter to let you know that, or to let us know that you're engaged. Maybe we'll say hi. We just discussed mindfully using your tech, especially with mobile devices, and now we're about to explore the dark side, the dark side of daily spending with a burst of sunshine. We're going to provide that to Anthony. So before we get into aligning your daily spending with your long-term vision, I, as I was thinking about this conversation that we're having that other people are engaging us with, you know, one of my biggest influences is a fellow named Mark Sisson. He's got an awesome website. It's called Mark's Daily Apple. And I just want to go a little bigger picture here. So I'm, I'm going to paraphrase quick, but Mark says that we can achieve self-control with some proper detachment. Um, in other words, I need to recognize that something in me wants that cookie, in my case, rather than I want that cookie. So there's a distinction. Something in me versus I want that cookie. Uh, in your case, maybe something inside you doesn't uh, wants that $15 Amazon order, or you at least do used to so that you should get the free shipping, not necessarily that you do. So I, I guess the curiosity that I have here, I just want to pause to ask, what else might take care of this impulse in the moment? How do you stop yourself, Anthony, and say, this doesn't really represent me or my vision. What else could I do right now? What else, what other action could I take that's going to satisfy this urge, this impulse? Mm -hmm. Well, I, that's a great question, and I, and I think to look at that, you have to also look at the bigger picture. Um, it, it was, I think, Adam Baker who said, if, if you don't define what freedom means to you, someone else will choose it for you, or something along that line. And so when we talk about intentional spending and how to 
kind of align your spending with what you actually want in life, you have to have at least a general vision or a general idea of what you want to be doing. And so for me, the the kind of the idea was what you mentioned, the Amazon stuff. I was kind of just spending the 15 or 20 bucks each day just on different things, and it would just have this kind of pattern where brown boxes would be coming to the house quite often. And it took me realizing the collective impact. And that probably is the best way to look at anything if you can look at the collective impact of the small actions that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And that can be for the good or the bad. So for me, it was looking at the total uh, damage, if you will, that happened over the course of four years of Amazon spending and seeing that that could have been traveling or it could have been all these other things that I would have really appreciated so much more and they were the things that really were meaningful to me that I wanted, just that my actions weren't aligning with that desire. So one of the best ways to kind of check in and just see is, again, create that intentional friction in the process and so that at least you give yourself a moment to check in because if you don't have that, you mm. can't, it's just too quick. So create some space in any way that you can and then also just, just try to walk away. And in a sense, if you walk away and think about the future or the person or the ideal day that you are aiming towards and ask if it aligns. And at that point it becomes a decision filter you get to decide if that thing gets you closer to making money for your business, if it gets you closer to taking that trip you've always wanted to take. And if it doesn't make it through that filter, you know, it, it makes it easier to go, okay, this is just one of those that inside gut desires that are really aren't, I'm not even going to care about it in, in a day or two from now, right? It's just one of those impulse purchases. Yeah. Well, speaking of impulse purchases, I'm looking in the comments as well, and Heather S. says, this is one of her tips, if you don't store credit card info on sites like Amazon, it can make you pause before you check out. That's, ah. that's beautiful. That's a perfect example of intentional friction, making it so you got to find your wallet. So if you're at home, you got to find it. Take it out of your pants or find your purse or whatever it is. Go get it. Walk back downstairs. You're, you're introducing a lot of space, which is so great. Right on. Well, I'd love to hear from other people. If they're, if you are in a sharing mode, we invite you at all times to tell us, tell your fellow participants in the webinar comments. If you're watching this on YouTube and the replay and the comments there with the tweet to simple underscore REV, what's your go-to replacement action when you feel a counterproductive impulse bubbling up in you? Mine is three deep breaths. Just in, sometimes they get pretty pretty verbal with the exhale as well. <laughs> Anthony, we were, we're talking kind of in generalities here, but do you have something kind of specific, something that you've struggled with but that you've now reconciled a little bit, a go-to urge-busting technique that you want to highlight? Yeah, definitely. So it's funny because I was going to say, it, and it, it may sound cliche, but honestly, breathing and being present and taking in the moment of life where you are right in that in that moment is just the best thing that you can do probably at any time. Uh, it really allows you to step back and admire what you have right in the moment. So the the other thing is is a gratitude practice in general that that can help with these sort of impulse busting things. It's been proven that when we address what we're grateful for on a regular basis, that eases the desires that we have. That makes it just much easier to realize the, the things that we have and not seeking more in, in different ways. Um, in terms of in that specific moment, um, yeah, you know, that's, that's a, I would say just t taking a moment to pause and to, to breathe, take three deep breaths, as you said, and just process. Just think about where you are and where you want to go and if this makes sense for what you're doing. Right on. Well, Pat uh, G left something funny in the comments here. He says his go-to is disc golf. <laughs> That's something, I think, Pat, you're in New Jersey. I don't know that you can play disc golf all year round. 
here in Minnesota that technique would work seasonally, but it's a it's a good one. And there's some other good Emily Emily S here says that she signed up for mint.com and when she wants to buy something, she looks at her net worth, how much it's grown since she started paying more attention to how I spend my money. That's her trigger. That's her intentional friction that she puts in there. Exactly. That's amazing too. Look at that that looking at the big picture and asking yourself, does this align with where things have gone and where they should go? That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you mind can I continue channeling Mark Sixon for a moment? Please, please do. I'm a total fanboy. I can't help it. <laughs> Just kind of building on, uh, there's things that we can do that are self-control related. There's other systematized thing or processes or intentional frickin friction that we can build into our lives, into our habits. But Mark talks about this pretty frequently. He says, self-control is the ultimate exercise of freedom. Self-control is the ultimate exercise of freedom. A freedom that comes from self-determination, liberated by both cultural norms and lesser impulses. So in other words, what he's really saying is what we call control is alignment with actualizing your higher will. Do you have any reflections on that statement? How do you feel about that? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's, that's one that takes a little processing. Um, and I was, th I was actually thinking about this earlier. Um, you know, I think that as I was kind of talking about earlier, when we can find when we can find our purpose or when we can really zone in on the things that that matter to us, the rest kind of qu quiets, right? Uh, I think when you're in alignment with the days you want that create the weeks and the months that you want, it all of a sudden just kind of it makes it easier to filter the things that that you don't want in your life and and you can kind of move forward with that understanding and it's I know that it's not the easiest thing to just say oh, I found my purpose if you're kind of looking or you're looking to expand into that but with each step and building a foundation of those daily actions that do make sense to you um, that comes one day at a time right on all right well let's turn it over to our participants again and we've got another question for you here which means I need to be ready to share something. Here we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Here's our prompt. Uh, how have you aligned your daily spending choices with your optimal lifestyle vision? We've touched on it a little bit. We're going to touch on it a little bit more. So whether that's on the Google event page with tweet, simple underscore REV, however else you want to share, we would love for you to tell each other and tell us how you're feeling about that. All right. Um, I'm going to channel someone other than Mark Sisson. Uh, I'm going to pass along some wisdom. There's a, a buddy of mine, Toku McCree, gave me once. He's got this awesome website on executive.com. And uh, Toku framed it like this, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but he's talking about our minds are being, they're like a lifelong roommate. We never pay attention to them. And my goodness, <laughs> I have felt that way far too many times. We're, we're in our minds, we're occupying our minds, we're keeping it busy, we're filling it with facts, yet we're spending very little time actually paying attention to it. So I can't help feeling that sometimes we just need to get out of our own way, tap into, I, I love this distinction, I make it all the time, the past version of me knows what's best because current Joel is always looking to sell out future Joel. So if I can do more listening to past Joel and let him be the CEO or the manager and just be the worker bee that past Joel wants me to be, Sometimes I can go on autopilot in the best way and train my attention in really positive ways. That allows me to not get distracted. It's helped by things like meditation. Just a really good investment. And I guess on the topic of investments, so we're going to get to the difference between um, immediate actions versus investment actions. I think let's talk about the third main thing that we wanted to talk about, creating the space for great daily habits. Now, if you recently joined this webinar, cool, we're grateful that you're with us. You can type the word new into the chat so we and everyone else knows that you're there. And if you're just joining us, just to recap, we discussed mindfully using your tech, aligning your daily spending with your ideal vision of how you want to live. Now we're about to explore creating the space for great habits. I want to start in one place, Anthony. You created this awesome video recently on your YouTube channel. You clarify the difference between immediate actions and investment actions. I could paraphrase, 
but I'm just going to let you jump right into it and tell us tell us about that distinction first. Absolutely. So the the big thing with daily action is exactly that. You're doing something no matter how small or stupid easy, if you will. You're doing something just about every day. And so when you're doing different things every day, some things you're going to see a result from very quickly. So sitting down and sitting just silently, whether you're meditating or praying or doing whatever it is that, that you choose to do, you'll see results from that relatively quickly. A daily practice of that will help you be more calm, more focused. And then there's other things like, on the flip side, learning computer programming. And so let's say you want to have, you have a particular vision for your life and maybe you want to travel more, you don't want to work in an office, you can have your, um, your immediate action, so the ones that benefit you immediately, be meditating, you can do different things like that on a daily basis, and you're going to see results right away. Versus investment actions is if you spend 10, 15 minutes learning how to, um, learning a development language or learning a new um, literal language like Spanish or, or Mandarin, it's those things that you're not going to see necessarily huge results. But after a year or after a year and a half or two years even, one day you can flip a switch and it will allow you to get a new job using that skill that will open up a whole new level of your vision of what you've wanted. So you kind of have to find a balance between immediate actions and investment actions to make sure that you're moving towards that future vision that you want, but also keeping the, the spirits high with the things that really benefit you right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a doozy. I don't know that I'm ever going to get there completely. Sarah, do you have anything that you want to add when it comes to investment actions versus immediate actions? I mean, it's a little bit like uh, my husband Chris and I were talking about tonight at dinner. It's eating the elephant a little bit, right? You know, trying to get to those things that you want to do, you kind of have to do a little bit each day, like you were talking about if you want to learn a programming language or something down the line. It's it's really hard to think of it in terms of a little bit each day is actually going to add up to something that you could unlock, I think, as you said, later. But um, it's very powerful. So I try to do it. In my life, whatever I'm trying to learn or do something, little pieces and eat the elephant every day, a little piece, a little piece, and then um, magically, great opportunities seem to just pop up, and it's it's very effective. Right on. Well, I'm looking in some of the comments here. Emily was just answering our past prompt about uh, investment actions, and she says that she spends money on quality food grown sustainably. I see it as an investment in my health my community and our planet. Absolutely. Heck yeah, Emily. Well, let's hear for some more folks. I Jerry Rice is my all-time favorite football player. I don't really watch NFL anymore, but Jerry Rice, I don't ever need a reason. And I knew that um, he just has this wonderful quote. He said that today I will do what others won't, so tomorrow I can accomplish what others can't. And since people are so awesome at the engagement and engaging with each other and a answering our questions and asking good questions. We've got one more thing for you right now that we would love to know in the comments, uh, in Twitter, simple underscore REV, wherever you want. What's well, one thing you can do today that others won't so that you can achieve what the people around you can't? Something to reflect on. Mm -hmm. All right, buddy. Well, let's get into a little more meaty stuff here. I saved a doozy, a doozy of a question for uh, right now to, in our quest to create some more space for great daily habits. And you are totally on fire with your YouTube videos, may I humbly say. Are you aware of this? Uh, well, I am now. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I received that. Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. I received that. Yeah, a little, little joke there. Let's, let's chat about some wisdom that you dropped on us last month. Uh, one of the most dangerous, these seemingly innocent phrases that anyone can say, I'm going to do whatever that important thing is here. So tell us, what happens when we start a sentence with, I'm going to do? So when you start talking about the things that you want to do, there is an action being taken. 
And that action very specifically is talking about the things that you want to do. Now, inherently, there's nothing wrong with sharing with people your intentions or, or talking about the things that you plan on doing. But when it comes down to the nitty gritty, it really does rely, when you're saying I'm going to, it actually feels pretty good to say that. And all of a sudden, you might get a dopamine release from saying that you're going to do something. And sometimes saying it feels good enough that we don't actually end up doing it. One of the things that with purchasing or this idea I call the false first step is where you purchase something thinking that it's going to help you get something done, but really it's just kind of affirming the words, I'm going to do it, but this time you're spending money to do it as well. What have you done? What are false first, or once, what's false first step that you've taken? One false first step would be that HTML and CSS handbook that I purchased wanting to learn front-end developing that then sit, sat on my bookshelf and collected dust for six months until it was minimized through the men's game. Uh, that is one perfect example. Um, another, another example would be like... Um, Camera gear is, is one that I'm, I love camera gear because I obviously shoot a lot and, and I'm working with it constantly. It's one of those things that helps me create. But there's definitely an element of um, when, when you're buying a really nice piece of camera gear or something, you're basically saying it's that that's holding me back from being a better filmmaker or a better photographer. It's that camera. It's nothing I'm doing, but it's because I don't have that. And the majority of the time, that's simply not true. So I know that in the past especially, I've gotten a piece of gear or something that maybe I wasn't ready for, and you start to realize that, you know what, it's putting in the time, it's investing the time instead of investing the money that's going to get me better results over yeah. time. So what do we do instead? Instead of saying, I'm going to do dot, 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 what's something else? The first thing that you want to do is take what you have and take the thing you need to do and take the little cookie crumb bite-sized chunk of that thing and just start. Just simply do it. Because from the moment, if, if your thing is I want to start running and you put on your running shoes and you step out onto the front porch and you take three steps, you are a runner. You, have, you, you did it. And that is a just world of difference between being someone who says you're going to run versus someone who has literally done it, no matter how small. It's incredibly powerful to just do the action, even if it's a little bit, and then do it again the next day and establish a pattern of action. It's incredibly powerful, and it, it works wonders. You can even do it on your YouTube channel. If you want to see good form on an air squat, Check Anthony out. We'll, <laughs> we'll link to it too. I don't know about good form, but but there's an air squat in there somewhere. Yeah. What about your push-ups, though? I think you do a pretty good push-up. It it was it was for doing one push-up. I think I held pretty good form. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you tips on some other things. I still have threatened to tell you how to mow your lawn better. That was in an old video that you did. One day I'll come over and I'll, I'll show you how to. Yeah, uh, show me the ropes. Yeah. A second or three. <laughs> well, man, our conversation so far today reminded me of something a while back. People are sharing some really cool quotes that they like in the comments as well. Actually, we've got one from Aaron here. He says, never give up on a dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it. The time will pass anyway. Earl Nightingale. And it's making me kind of think of something else that goes around in my brain that I go to my spreadsheets and look up quotes about. it. And I don't know who this is attributed to, but it goes, don't give up what you want most for what you want now. Mm. And I guess that's reconnecting with your big why. Why we're doing what we're doing, why we're here talking on this webinar, why people are engaging with us, why they've decided that they wanted to invest, make an investment action, and hang out with us for a period of time, which is super cool, that we're really grateful for. I Let's, let's actually, so one more thing is that I would love to hear everyone who's participating, whether it's live or whether it's you're watching the replay on YouTube and you leave a comment there. What's one small step that you can take now to better align your daily decisions 
with your ideal future. You can share your insights on our Google event page in the Q&A part. On Twitter, we're at simple underscore REV. Anywhere that others can benefit from them too because Anthony and I certainly do not have uh, any exclusive domain when it comes to knowledge and wisdom here. The collective amount that's coming from folks tonight is just really, really cool to see. So we're going to get to some q and I'm looking over here. Sarah's probably got a couple of things that she wants to feature as well. Uh, but I also want to talk a little bit about you know, why, why we're here. We were just talking about that. And this is a Simple Rev hosted webinar and why we decided to do it. Anthony, you've been such a huge part of what we're building with Simple Rev uh, and specifically with Simple Rev Local. You've been uh, a co-host with Jeff Sandquist. Shout out to Jeff. He is awesome. We love mm -hmm. you, Jeff. And I guess kind of transitioning into going back to the big why. Why is it that we want to be more intentional? Why is it that we want to limit our spending and our consumption so that we can focus on things that are more relevant, more important to us, so that we can be generous and contribution-oriented to other people? And if folks haven't heard about this Simple Rev Local thing, we talk about them as they're free, they're intimate. These, these groups, these community groups around the world, we've got a group that's starting up in Wellington, New Zealand. Uh, we have Aaron, who's on our webinar. Aaron and Michelle out in Portland. Oregon, and they're getting some things going. All these community groups that are helping each other on whatever their version of a simple living journey is, whether it's tiny houses or permaculture, mindfulness through meditation, there's so many cool aspects of it. And whether folks have been simplifying for years, whether they've just gotten into it, the power of in-person connection, being around these inspiring people is just super duper sweet. So Anthony, I know you've You've been to all of our Minneapolis, St. Paul gatherings. Uh, how would you explain Simple Rev Local and your experience over the past year and a half with it? You know, we were talking about accountability earlier and having people in your life that really can keep you in check and also share these ide ideas of, of what it means to live an intentional life. And having that community is really what it's like. It's having people that become your friends and you get to share your own journey and hear experiences from their own. And it's just this really open, warm thing that, that you get to do on a monthly basis. Uh, and you have those people that check in with you and, and you know make sure you're sticking to the things that you said that you wanted to do that month. And again, just kind of sharing that collective journey no matter uh, you know, you get such a, a variety of people, but it really is all kind of brought together under the umbrella of, of simple living, which is so great. Right on. Sarah, do you want to jump in here? Um, I was, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was just going to say there's a comment on Twitter from Dell that said, decided to pursue a career that takes more time but has a much higher payout in terms of opportunities. And I thought that was really neat and brave and that um, you know investment that we were talking about earlier thinking about what you want in the future so go Dell yeah mm -hmm. yeah well she would like to invest locally simple rev local is always available and we uh, some of our past webinar participants last year folks like Mark and Angel Chernoff and Joshua Becker Courtney Carver I know they've been really supportive in what we're doing period with simple rev but especially with simple rev local so whether you want to join um, you're in Minneapolis you're in Sydney you're over with Peta Wilson over there you're in Atlanta even in Sandwich Illinois where Marianne is doing some cool stuff you want to be that simple living spark or you want to join other people who are dedicated to mindfulness and decluttering and minimalism, minimalism yoga zero waste all this all this nifty stuff breaking the twitch which is on the rise I hear <laughs> if you like to do simplicity your way what well, we, we, we say like do simplicity your way at your speed and with your local inspiring and generous people we're going to invite you to apply, and I've got a little prompt for everybody right here. You can go to simplerev.com slash local. Maybe your community is already active. Maybe you want to be that spark in your community. If you're motivated, we'll help you. We've got tons of resources, too. We would love to know, and we'd love to see you create your own local ripple effect in everything that we're doing. So let's, let's talk a little question action here. 
folks have been commenting and a lot of these are statements that are kind of question-ish that I bet we could riff on and add a lot of value and other people can and give us some questions as well. So for those of you who have sent tweets and added comments on the Google event page, sent your great questions ahead of time, awesome. Thank you for that. We're going to field a number of questions right now while still, of course, being respectful of your time. Sarah, do you have anything that you would like to lead with? Um, I have not seen any questions, and I just uh, checked in on Twitter, and I haven't seen anything there yet, so you, you take it away. Well, I've got something from Emily here, and it's not really a question, but I know this is a question that other people have, and Emily, you've addressed part of it too. She says, normally I mindlessly surf the web after I'm done eating my lunch until it's time to get back to work. I took a small step the past two days. I told myself, no mo FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> no mo FOMO. That's the fear of missing out, FOMO, if you're not familiar. Uh, then I left my office and went for a walk outside. So Anthony, I'm going to turn that into a question because I know I struggle, lots of people struggle with it too. When it comes to FOMO, how have you conceptualized, how have you dealt with it in the past? So um, it, that's a great question. And the, the um, thing that I, I tend to come back to is something that a, a guy named Kyle Cease once said, and, and that is when you're standing at the ocean, you're standing on the beach watching the waves, and when you're standing there, the waves will come in and then the, the tide will roll back out. And they will continue to do so whether or not you are watching them. So essentially the world is going to happen and the world is going to be rolling along and the waves will come and go, but we are not responsible for watching to make, it, make sure it happens and worry about whether or not it will happen. So in a kind of big picture way, we're designed to be, as humans, we're designed to be here. As far as our eyes can see, our ears can hear, and the digital devices and laptops and different things have expanded that reach in a massive way. And so getting back to our roots of being where we can hear and where we can see without the aid of a telescope, let's say, a digital telescope, and just being present and, and appreciating what we have is, is just the mentality that you can bring to that, that uh, feeling of, of maybe missing out on something instead of just being here. All right. Nifty. Sarah, jump in here at any point in time if you want. I'll keep I'll keep going. You're on mute. So yeah. here I'll I'll pick one actually. Uh, this one's from Amelia and she says that she twitches and orders Starbucks with the mobile app too much. Here's here's how much I know about coffee and Starbucks. I didn't even 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 know you could do that. Although it is the 21st century, so it makes sense that you can do these kinds of things. Welcome to 2016. Yeah. <laughs> Woo Wait, is it the new year? No, it's it's March, right? It's March. We're a bit past okay. it. Uh, and she says to break the Twitch for Lent, she started paying herself five dollars when I want coffee, but she makes it home instead. So paying her, literally paying herself. It's kind of a double whammy. One, you're not spending, and two, you are investing. You're saving that money that you would have spent for something else, something more strategic, something more intentional. Anthony, I know that your Amazon consumption days are over. Do you have Do you have anything like that? Do you ever decide to, when you feel a twitch, to, one, not act on it through some of the things that we've been talking about, but two, do something else productive, whether it's money-wise or with your time or your energy or some other resource? Well, I've kind of been forced to do that as the last year or so I've been planning and preparing to uh, leap into this entrepreneurship phase for me without a steady income right away. And so a lot of that is weighing the cost of, in a way, freedom, I guess, or as, as your, uh, um, your friend eloquently put it, or the person, uh, the apple, <laughs> I guess. Um, but... It's, it's weighing the freedom that could come from any contribution, any lack of purchase, and, uh, and then putting it up against that purchase every single time. Because if you really put those things on the scale, 
not buying it is going to win 99.9% .9 of the time. The other thing is I like to look at flights, and that's not necessarily as financially responsible as putting it in a bank account, but it puts it on the scale, and it gives you a good sense of um, a person you could visit, a place you could go, and something you could really do and experience as opposed to just clicking that, that button one more time. Yeah. Have you ever, I'm um, noticing another comment here from Heather, she says that she makes a do not buy list and she jots the stuff down that she wanted but didn't buy. She gives herself kudos and she should for not buying the stuff that was on that list. And the total of what she would have spent also gives her additional perspective. You ever done a do not buy list? I haven't. Uh, my, my list would be really long though, so, <laughs> so uh, I might have to do that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Are you going to tell us something that's on your do not buy list? Oh man, any more Besides camera flight. gear, any more camera gear at all. <laughs> that's everything that ta that takes a photo or shoots a picture of something is on the do not buy list. I've got everything I need and I'm super happy with what with what I have. So, yeah. I can see Sarah nodding her head too. I think we should be camera. accountability partners on that one, Anthony, cuz I'm, I'm in the same I'm... boat. If it you. takes a picture, if it saves pixels, and I get to look at them, I'm, I'm, I, it's on. Yeah, needs to be on the do not buy list right now. <laughs> right on. Uh, here's a question from Jeff: Where did Joel's beard go? Please bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> did it get minimized? <laughs> it did. It did. I minimized the beard. Uh, it's a it's a seasonal thing, Jeff. I'll probably bring it back this year. Thank you for your concern, and I, I do like the beard look. I'm glad that other people do too. <laughs> oh, let's see. What else do we have, Sarah? Do you have anything that is pressing that you are thinking about? Uh, that I'm thinking about? Um, no, not that's pressing. This has all been really good. I was just gonna say, as far as not buying in a do not buy list, Chris and I this month are doing a no spend March. We just took all the spending off the table except for food, necessities, and it's allowed us to do some really creative thinking, like children's birthday parties has been a big issue, like how do you not buy a present, and um, and it's also made it easier to not have to think about like what things we can buy, what we can't, just do not buy March, and it's it's prompted a lot of discussions and a lot of concerns about um, how we're spending and the mindlessness that goes with it, and I would throw that out there as an idea if anybody would like to... Um, Try that. It, you, you'll fail miserably. Uh, we've failed miserably, but uh, it's definitely prompted some discussions between us, and those have been really interesting and helpful. Mm -hmm. Creativity is, is greatest within some amount of restriction. And, and Absolutely. That's an, an amazing part of the process as well. That's great that you're doing that. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's another comment here from Emily. Emily, you are active, and we love it. She says that nobody so far has mentioned automating your savings as a way to avoid mindless spending. If the money is locked in investments rather than your checking account, you might be less likely to spend it. That's true. Although that can be a little bit tricky too, especially if you're putting that money into a retirement account. If you're in the United States or Canada um, and you can't touch that money until you're 60 or 65 without paying a big penalty, um, I think that's great advice and I've actually used that myself as well and sometimes to discipline myself I have in the past and my wife Melinda still does this as well is put a lot of money in the retirement account and even though we don't have a traditional view of retirement in terms of what we want that to be it is a way to just have default discipline built in which is a pretty nifty thing. Anthony I got one thing for you here it's not really a question but I would like you to comment on it. Heather says, more books, less internet. Well, I can comment um, by showing uh, these guys back here. Uh, I have realized that I love books, and I love reading in physical form. And when I was going through the kind of minimizing process, I got rid of a lot of books that were unread. Because as we were talking about earlier, a lot of those books were the false first step for me. It was a it was a hope and a dream in twenty dollars worth of books that just sat on the shelf. So during that time, I actually donated and sold back every book that I had not read. And at this point, I have started now. I, I buy books again because I realize I really love buying books and I really love 
reading them. And so why not why not have them? Especially there are other you know you can get them used or you can get them um, really good deals on them too. But you know I think it's um, yeah, more. I support. I would. I would stand behind that campaign slogan if I were running for president. Uh, more books, more books, less internet. Less internet. You even got the thumb thing down yeah, too. Yeah, I got the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I would happily vote for you on that platform. Wonderful. I'm I glad I can count on your support. <laughs> Well, I think we can probably do one or two more. We'll go just slightly over time since we started a few minutes late. And for folks, if you need to go, if you're watching us live, by all means, we appreciate the heck out of your attention, your time, your engagement, your insight that you've been sharing with us. Aaron's got something for us, Anthony. He says, with today's pervasiveness of constantly connected, always available, respond immediately culture, how do you guys handle or proactively approach that topic with colleagues, friends, or family. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that can be a little painful at first, and it eases as you go. There was definitely some panicked, uh, some panic induced when I turned off the notifications for my work email, and I might have been in a somewhat unique situation, but even with things that are urgent, like if you're at a trading desk for the stock market, you need to get the notification right away if a client is asking you to trade something. But the overwhelming majority of the time, it's just not necessary. And so you start to, um, it feels weird to do, and the people um, around you, your coworkers or family or different people, will kind of maybe wonder why they haven't heard back within a minute or two. But in a sense, if we've been answering for several years right away and very instantly, it, it sounds weird to say, but we've simply been training them that that is the norm and that's what's okay. And so the moment you step away from that, it might feel awkward a bit at first, but sooner rather than later, it adjusts and everything equalizes and that just becomes the expectation that it's okay and if you need to reach me, you can call me directly if there's an emergency or if there's something. I'll know that if I get a phone call from you, it's it's urgent. And there can be some tricky balance with that too, but it's all about kind of crafting that existence and those kinds of things to make it work for your environment. It's yeah. hard. It's not easy. Yeah, it is. It is hard. Sarah's nodding over there. Sarah, actually, one thing that is hard that Anthony's not qualified to talk about, no offense, Anthony, but you don't have kids. None taken. Yet, at least. Um, Sarah, let's wrap up here because you've been you've been doing a lot of behind-the-scenes work and you've been contributing in some pretty neat, silent ways, but you also have a lot of great things to say as well. Amelia has a question for us, and she says, do you have any thoughts or tips on raising kids in this mindless world and teaching them how to be mindful? Yeah, we, I, my husband and I, we deal with that a lot. We've been married seven years. We have two identical five-year-old boys and a seven, eight, oh, nine months today old. Um, and just for the sake of time, I would say that the biggest tip, and I think Anthony will agree with this even though he doesn't have kids, is to, number one, start as you mean to go, but number two, to set the example and set the tone. And I actually read an article once that said a lot of people are worried that this generation is going to be mindlessly looking at their screens all the time. They're not going to know how to communicate. <clears throat> and they were arguing that actually they think the opposite is going to happen because they don't want to give other people the experience that they had with their parents, if that makes sense. So a lot of kids are so hurt and so turned off by the fact that their parents are always looking down at their phones that they don't want to raise their kids like that and they don't want to have experiences like that with their friends because they've been on the other end of it and know how it feels. And so actually this generation might be the best equipped to have these meaningful conversations to be able to turn off their phone because they don't want to hurt other people's feelings like theirs were hurt. So I just try to think of it from their point of view and of what example, whatever example I set is what they're going to do. If it's okay for me to have the phone at the table, they're going to have the phone at the table. If it's okay for me to look down at my phone at a stoplight, they're going to look think that's okay. And I never, I never want them thinking that that's okay, for sure. So um, I just set the example, and we set the tone, whatever we feel like we want them doing to us when they're 20 years old, and uh, what we think is appropriate, they pick up on it like, like that. And um, 
So just setting the example and starting as you mean to go, starting when they're young and just continuing it consistently. Well said. Yep. I, I mean, not having kids, like you said, but I would totally agree with that philosophy. I mean, I, anytime I've been around young kids or my niece and nephews, uh, if you're doing something, they're going to reflect that behavior or they're going to wonder what's so great about that. Right. Um, you know, even, yeah, it, it, it's you're exactly right. And I think you're right. It's going to be an interesting thing to have the next generation grow up with us leading that example and seeing what they do in response. And one last thing I would add. This is Emily that asked? No, this Amelia. 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 One last thing I would add. I find myself sometimes I really do have to use my phone to figure out something like what the, what's the weather? Do we need jackets or is there traffic on the road? Which route should I take? I talk them through what I'm doing on my phone because I think another thing is it's a very mysterious thing and they don't know what you're doing on there. We, back in the day we used to see our parents open the newspaper and look at the map and see the weather. You know they would be watching the TV and you'd see the traffic report. So if I'm using my phone in the morning I say well let's check the weather and I show them that I'm checking the weather but I'm not just ignoring them and mindlessly scrolling through whatever. It kind of takes a little bit of the mystery away they can understand better um, what mommy and daddy are looking at and doing and I think that helps add the mindful element to it as well. That's great. We just came full circle. That's a great example of how to use your tech mindfully, especially on your mobile device. <laughs> <It is. laughs> there you go. Uh, cool. Well, so we talked about how to better align your daily spending with your long-term vision, how to create unique space for great habits, all good stuff. Really great comments and engagement from everybody. Thank you so much. If you're curious, we're going to be emailing you a link to the replay. Uh, it'll be on YouTube. We'll send that out in the next 24 hours if you're watching this live. You can also watch on simplerev.com. If you go to simplerev.com slash AOWebinar, we're going to have the replay up there even sooner than we email it out. And really, we do not want this to be end of our conversation. We want you in the people who have been going back and forth. You've discovered some new person who's inspiring you besides Anthony and Sarah. Keep that chatter going. Keep it going with us. Keep it going with your fellow participants. Keep it going in the comments on the Google event page. You can do tweets. We're at simple underscore REV. Anthony is at Anthony Ongaro, O-N-G-A-R-O. -O. You can continue to use the hashtag simple rev. Whatever you do, Anthony, wow. Thanks a ton for joining Sarah and I. Uh, Sarah, thank you for moderating and asking good questions, adding good insight. Anthony, for those of you who, or for those who are watching who want more of your world, how would they get that? Well, you know, thank you for having me and again for all the work both of you have done to, to set this up. And so anything from me can be found at breakthetwitch.com. BreakTheTwitch.com. You can search it on YouTube, Break the Twitch, or my name, Anthony Angaro, and you'll find me in all of those places. Super cool. Sarah, do you have anything that you would like to get in here? No, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for being here, and uh, we hope to hear from you more. Right on. Well, thanks again, everyone. We're grateful for your time and attention, for the enthusiasm that you brought with us, with the topic for slowing down, for simplifying, for being more intentional. It all helps. And you've helped us. You've helped each other tonight. So thank you a ton. That is our chat for today.